To get to the WebDAC homepage, I'll type in the device name into the address bar. I've already configured the device name to be webdac-demo. Otherwise, the default name is the webdac-mac address, which is printed on the underside of the device. You can access the WebDAC from any internet-enabled device on the same network. This is the WebDAC homepage where you set up your data acquisition, as well as view the data in real time. I'll click on the plus icon, to, which will open the job editor. Let's give the job a name, low speed scan. Then add a thermocouple channel to the job. I'll choose channel zero and click OK. Now I can configure the channel properties. My thermocouple connected to channel zero is type J and I want the data displayed in degrees Fahrenheit. If I click on the acquisition tab, I can configure the sample rate and any start or stop settings for this job. Let's set the sample rate to two hertz, have the acquisition begin immediately, and stop manually when I click on the abort button. Next, we can configure the logging options. Here, you can choose where to store your data file after the job is complete. If you have an SD card or flash drive plugged into the device, you can choose to save the files there. Otherwise, the default location is the internal storage of the device. I'll leave the option to append the date and time checked so that I have a timestamp in the file name for each instance of my job. The final option is to configure any alarms. Let's say I want to be notified if the temperature exceeds a certain threshold. I'll set the alarm condition to above 85 degrees. and I want the alarm to be logged to my data file. I also want the alarm to reset once it's false, so that I get another notification if the temperature goes above 85 degrees multiple times during the job. So now I'm done configuring my job, so I'll click Finish. As you can see, the job has been added to my schedule, and I can see a summary of the configuration options. If I look over at my dashboard, my display has been populated with a scalar indicator of my data, the alarm status, and a strip chart that will show the log data in real time. Let's run the schedule. I can now see that my job is running and view the values as they are being logged. If I go back to the schedule, I can see that the status is running and I have an abort button available next to the file name. If I click on the abort button, the job will complete and a check mark will appear next to the job name in your schedule. Now let's take a look at our data file. I'll go to the data files tab, which shows the available storage locations on my device. I save the file in internal storage under the name low speed scan and an appended date and time. Now that I've located the file, I have a few options. I can open the file in the WebDAC display, save it as a CSV file to open in a program such as Excel, delete the file, or download the raw file. You can also upload a file from your computer, such as a previous data file you want to view in the WebDAC display, or a saved schedule that you want to import. Let's go ahead and display the file here. This shows a strip chart of all the data collected during this job. as well as the acquisition details and the job details. I can also change my display options to show more or less data at once. As well as change the X values from samples to time. Within the chart, I can zoom and pan in by clicking and dragging my mouse. Now that I've shown you the basic functionality of the WebDAC, let's look at some additional features that take this device to the next level. Right now, when the temperature goes above 85 degrees, an alarm is triggered and logged to file. But let's say I want to switch to a different acquisition setup when the alarm condition is met. When the temperature exceeds 85 degrees Fahrenheit, I want to acquire data at a faster sample rate, then switch back to the lower sample rate once the temperature drops back below the threshold. Let's take a look at how I can set this up. For my high speed acquisition task, I'll create a second job and name it high speed scan. I'm still using the same thermocouple. So it's type J in degrees Fahrenheit. 
In the acquisition settings, I'll change the sample rate to 10 Hertz and keep the same start and stop conditions as the first job. For the logging options, we'll log this data to the internal storage with a log file name of high speed scan plus the appended date and time. Now let's look at the alarm conditions. To make sure I switch back to the slow acquisition when the temperature drops back below my threshold, I'll set an alarm for below 84 degrees Fahrenheit. I still want to log the alarm to a file. Let's name it switch jobs on temp limit. This time, we're also going to add an action to jump to our low speed job. Now I have a second job that acquires data at a faster rate, then switches back to the slower rate job once the temperature drops back below our threshold. I still need to modify my first job's alarm conditions to match. Let's go back to the settings for low speed scan and change the alarm conditions. I want to log this alarm to the same file I set in high speed scan. Switch jobs on temp limit. And again, I'll add an alarm action to jump to the job high speed scan when the temperature is above 85 degrees. So that's it for our setup. Let's run the schedule and see what happens. We can see that the first job, low speed scan, is running. Let's take a look at the data. To get the temperature above our threshold, I'll go ahead and touch the thermocouple. Once the temperature passes our limit, the acquisition switches to high speed scan. If we go back to the schedule, we can see that high speed scan is running. When I let go, the temperature slowly drops. And then we switch back to low speed scan. So far, we've been doing all of our configuration set up on a desktop. But the great thing about the web DAC is that you can monitor and control your application from any web-enabled device. Let's say I'm on the go, and I really need to check on my test to make sure that it's still running smoothly. If I type in the IP address for the web DAC into my phone's browser, I can access the web DAC homepage and look at the dashboard to view my acquisition. I can also change my settings or create a new job and abort the schedule if I need to.